All right, people, what is up? My name is Cameron, and welcome back once again. We're out here at the Texas City Dyke, second day in a row, or second video in a row. And uh, last time we were out here, we were fishing that side of Mosquito Island, which is the side close, or going towards the Skyline Drive. But today, we're actually gonna be fishing the little flat behind us. I've never fished over here, but most people, when they come out here, fish on this side. And they say that is a side that holds a lot of fish. I don't know. We're gonna find out. We're throwing croaker, so, you know, doing a little bit of cheating today, but don't really care if it works, why not? And that's the plan, guys, stay tuned, and we're gonna get after them, and hopefully we'll be able to tie into something. All right, so we just got out here. Uh, we have a chatterweight and a little croaker hook or tail hook, I don't remember what it's called, I always say that. But chatterweight is about a foot and a half to 20 inches above it. And we're just gonna hook our croaker through the tail and this will make him swim up when that chatterweight sits on the bottom. And I don't know if y'all can hear that or not, but that's what you're going for. Beautiful sound. Just gonna lob him out here. We made it out here and uh, within about five steps, it went from knee deep to the top of your thighs. So we think this is a good place to start. We're just gonna throw him out. Oh man, he's going wild. And people fish croaker different ways. Um, the way I do it, is I actually click the button, open the bail, and I let him free swim, tighten that down, so then the wind doesn't pull it out and the waves don't pull it out, but the croaker can. And whenever he gets picked up, I let him take it for a minute so they can get it all the way in their mouth, and then close it and just kind of reel into it. I don't jerk the hook too hard. And every once in a while, whenever I don't feel him swimming anymore, you can, t you can tighten down on him. If you don't feel him swimming, you can give it a couple pops, and that'll rattle that chatter weight, and you'll usually make him start swimming again. But if you have them hooked backwards, just remember the more you pop them and the more you reel them in, the quicker you're going to kill them. So the other way people fish croaker is just normal like this and they kind of work it every 15 or 20 seconds or whatever, they give it a pop. They don't open the bill or anything like that. But yeah. Also, uh, if you haven't watched our Galveston or top three fishing spots in Galveston video, I mentioned, I believe it's called the hook and line wade map. And that is for West Bay is one that I'm, as I'm referring to right now. But if you look at Mosquito Island, it talks about fishing this side of Mosquito Island and it's called the Tech City Dyke Flats or something like that. I don't remember. But yeah, so I've never fished this side. Like I said, I've always fished the other side. But might as well give it a try. And the main reason we're fishing this side is because the wind is blowing uh, or we're at, we have our backs towards the wind right now and we're fishing the other oh I just got bit that was weird huh anyway what I was saying is that we have our backs towards the wind and as you can see the waves going by us it's going this way the other side is just too blown out the wind was supposed to die off around three Nolan right something like that but I would say it's probably still blowing 50 miles an hour and we're supposed to die down to like eight or nine but you gotta make do with what you got we actually fished the other side of the dike and Nolan caught a flounder that is the only fish of the day so far we didn't expect to catch anything so we weren't even recording all right guys the video is not over yet we are back at the house unfortunately we did not catch any fish soaking live croaker but earlier in the day Nolan caught this one flounder and we didn't we weren't even recording yet so we don't have the whole video of it but what we do have we're going to roll those clips right now and then we'll meet y'all right back here because we are doing a whole fried flounder catch and cook for y'all so enjoy those clips and then we'll see y'all in a minute all right do it there we go people all right Nolan, comment it looks a little small no he's a keeper He's easily 14. He's 16. 15. No, 15. 15. That right there looks like one for the uh, catch and cook. All right, here we are. Nolan with the first fish of the day. Flounder, 15 inches. We're out here at the Texas City Dyke. Throwing him on the stringer, and we're going to try to catch some more. So let's get to it. All right, so how we got this flounder in the cooler is a complete mystery to me because it was a struggle trying to bring it up on the rocks. But we're going to get to clean it. So first thing I'm going to do, I always wash them off, get some of the slime off, and uh, clean them up a little bit. All right. Now, 
I've actually never done this before and I don't have a pan big enough to fit this whole flounder. So I'm just gonna cut the head off like I would normally do. So just right in behind this fin on the side and we're gonna actually, oop, so slippery. <laughs> we're gonna actually run up and get all the head meat. Make it cut back down. I'm gonna go around the front of the guts right here and then we'll pull the guts out in a second. Right behind the first fin. Cut down through it. Watch out for your finger there. Give it a twist and the head comes, oh. <laughs> Give it a twist and the head comes off. Super easy. And we'll take a look and see what's in the guts in a minute. But now that we have that done, all we're gonna do is we're gonna scale it and then, like I said, pull the rest of the guts out, which I think they're already out and they'll be done. So I used to have one of those little, like one or $2 scalers from Academy or Walmart. You can buy them almost anywhere. I can't find it right now. So we're just gonna use a spoon, which is pretty universal. Everyone has a spoon. And all you're gonna do is go against the scales, starting from the tail, scrape it down. And they come off fairly easy. And once we're done with this, we'll get back to y'all. All right, so we got the fish scaled. It took all of about three minutes. Um, you just want to make sure that you get all the way around the tail if you're going to be eating down in that area. And next to the fins right here is where a lot of people leave scales. And then wherever you cut it off at the head, down on this little stomach part, because it kind of folds in. You want to make sure you get all that. because You definitely don't want to end up with scales in your mouth when you're eating. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to score the fish. You do this so it cooks faster and so uh, you get all the seasoning in the cracks. That's what we're going to do right now. Just gonna make some cuts. I think I'm gonna go ahead and angle. Cutting down to the backbone. I've done this to fish before, but never fried the whole fish. I've cut the flays off and then done this, or like done half of it. I've been wanting to do this for a while. And then check it out after it cooks see we have these squares these are just going to be able to pull right off instead of having to pick it off with every single bone it's going to fall right off in your hand pretty awesome all right the fish is all ready we're going to go inside we're going to heat up our grease and season this bad boy up and then we're going to get to cooking and have us a nice little dinner all right so we're in the kitchen now we got our flounder all cut up, like I saw, and we actually had to cut the tail off of it because it's not gonna fit in the pan. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our oil, pour it in the pan, let that get to heating up. But before we do that, I'm gonna show y'all the spices and what we're using for today. We have just some normal kosher salt, garlic powder, Hungarian paprika, and black pepper, and then of course, flour, because we're gonna fry the fish. And we don't have enough oil, I believe, to cover the top of the fish. Actually, we might. There's a lot more than I thought. Hey, we'll add some more. Might as well. It was good enough to me because we want the fish to be completely submerged. But if we don't have enough oil or if it's not completely submerged, then it's not really the big of a deal. We can just flip it. Okay, we're going to turn this on close to high. Let it get heating up and then we can always regulate the temperature after that. So we're going to start off by seasoning up our fish. We are going to open all these first so we don't cross-contaminate right and while I'm doing this I just want to let y'all know that we are going to be making a sauce with this like an Asian type sauce and uh, whenever we do that I'll show y'all what we're putting in it and I've never done it before so hopefully it'll be good I've never done any of this before we're just kind of making it up all right so we're gonna start off with a little bit of black pepper and get the napkin out here we don't need that anymore all right, and whenever you do this, you want to make sure that the fish is open so it gets in all the cracks and crevices all around the fish. So, as you can see, black pepper. Sprinkle that on there. Top and bottom. All right, whatever. That's good enough. We're going to move on to the salt, which is dangerous, but we're going to do it anyways. you got to be careful with the salt. And this is Big Flakes Kosher Salt. If we get too much on there, it's not a big deal because we can just 
funk it off. All right, next, we're going on to the paprika. I love paprika. Even though it doesn't have a crazy strong taste, it has that barely any spice to it, but a lot of good flavor here. So we're going to do a lot of that. That is absolutely beautiful. Bottom, pop, 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 Something like that. A little bit of there. Probably around that much. Looks good to me. And lastly, garlic powder. Always need the garlic powder. Why not? Okay, now that's seasoned up, we're going to put our flour in a bowl. Dump some flour in there. That's way, probably way more flour, flour than we need. And then we're going to take our flounder and boom, straight in the flour. We don't need any egg wash, no milk, anything like that. Mix it around. Make sure you get it inside of all the cracks. As you can see, you can pick it up, sprinkle it inside the cracks. And that's going to help get that fry, nice crispy fry inside of there. So we got our oil at about 355 degrees. You want it somewhere around 350 to 375. And we're going to lay our whole flounder in there. Always lay it away from you so the oil doesn't splash on you. All right, so we have all of our ingredients here for our sauce. We honestly have no idea what we're doing, but it's pretty simple. Soy sauce, hoisin, sesame, mirin, garlic, uh, squeezed garlic as always, and ginger as always. So the amounts, like I said, we have no idea. We're just going to start off. So we're adding soy sauce for our base. Now that we have some of that in there, that's going to be what we have most of. We're going to go into the hoisin, which is absolutely delicious, but also very strong. So you don't want to put a crazy amount. And then same thing with the sesame oil. This stuff is extremely strong. So just a few drops and you'll taste it. Five or six drops in there. And then mirin, which will make it sweeter. It's just sweet cooking wine, rice wine. A couple dabs of that. And garlic. Squeeze garlic. Boop, boop. And ginger, because ginger is amazing and quite a bit of ginger. All right, we give it a good mix. And that's it. All right, so we're going to take our fish. It's probably way too done. Because we, we actually had the grease too hot. But we take the fish out. And pan. We're going to let it, the grease roll up on that pan. And then we're going to put it on the plate and we're going to eat it. We put it on the heater, or on the stove, and we added a little bit of cornstarch to thicken it up. And now check that out. Beautiful. That's going to be amazing. I already know it. I mean chives for some color and a little bit of parsley. All right there people is whole fried flounder. Probably fried, fried a little too much, but I think it's still gonna be delicious. We're gonna get taste test over here and I'm excited. So let's just get to it. I'm hungry. All right guys, so check it out. We're sitting up here, we're gonna do a little introduction with a new person that's never been in the videos before. This right here is our good buddy, Mr. McLovin. Uh, if y'all don't know who McLovin is, y'all need to go watch. What movie Super is this? Superbad. Super I was thinking Jackass. Y'all need to go watch Superbad, and you'll see him in that movie. I don't know, dude, it's just, we have an actor right here with us. So, anyway, he is about the pickiest eater you can find. I think he only eats chicken nuggets, and he said he's been eating pizza rolls. He ate them twice today for lunch and or breakfast and lunch, even for breakfast. So pretty impressive. And ice cream. And ice cream. So <laughs> he's moving up in the world. Anyways, we're gonna get him to try this and see if he likes it. Honestly, I don't even know how it's gonna be because we definitely cooked it for too long. Um, we put it on, the temperature went up, and the oil it got too hot, and then we turned it down, then it got too cold. So then we had to turn it back up again, and we ended up cooking this for like ten minutes versus like five. So some of these out here feel like a potato chip. As you can hear, and then some in here are just absolutely juicy. All right, so go ahead. Let's take a bite. 
See how good it is. Just pick it right off of the bone. Get some rice in there. Some rice. He's going for it. All right. So first bite right there. Pretty good. Before I say how much I like it, we're going to get his honest opinion. And he's not going to lie just because we made it. So what do you think? Scale of, okay, we need a scale of 1 to 10. Probably about a 6.5, 7. thought he was going for 4 there for a minute. I think he probably was. <laughs> a 6.5 or a 7 is what he's getting, giving it. Honestly, with this one, I'm going to give it probably like an 8. This is really good. I'm impressed by that. We're going to keep on eating it. We're going to get Nolan over here. Come on, Nolan. There's a fork for you. All right, Mr. Nolan over here. Give it the good old college try. <laughs> I mean, Nathan said it was a six, but he's going back for like third, so. We're going to get some rice with this. Some rice with it. Go in on it, Nolan. Let's see it. One to ten, and what would you, what do you think should be changed or something like that? Let's see. I'm going to give this a uh, probably eight two. An 8.2? We're going to go 8.2. Oh, that's good, I like, this, I like this a lot. Has, uh, it's way better than I thought it would be. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, I like the sauce a lot. Sauce is amazing. All right, guys. So, as you can see, we're over here. We're enjoying this. For the first time cooking it, it turned out a lot better than I thought. Um, if y'all like this video, make sure to hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. And if you are, thank you so much for subscribing. We're at 1,750, 1,750. Yep. So we're making our climb to 2,000. It's been amazing, and we're going to keep busting out videos for y'all, even trying to do them during this COVID stuff. Uh, anyways, thank y'all so much once again, and go follow us on Instagram at before underscore outdoors. And until next time, peace. peace.